chapter today. Ghana's Education Minister, Dr. Yawasedi Chu, uh, became a call centre agent and a miracle worker because at the um, school selection and placement centre, uh, he addressed concerns of parent and ward. Now, one of these incidents played out like a testimony uh, session in church. Watch this. A parent who is on the line, if there's none, uh, until some come, uh, there are some other things. There's somebody on your line? No? Okay. Uh, if some calls come online, I'll be uh, happy uh, to pick the call and, and, and speak with some parents. We're also going to call a few parents to find out how their experience getting their children into school uh, has been. So that will also be taken care of. I just want the general public to know that we are fiercely determined to bring about change in the education space. And that is what has brought us to uh, this event today that would dialogue with the public, get them to understand the processes, give them an update as to where we are, and we have an uh, able group of uh, staff who are going to do that, we have the director of instruction from Ghana Education Service here. Uh, uh, Mr. Prince is here to help us. We also have uh, Mr. Sasu, uh, who is also going to be joining, and then we have the National Coordinator for Free Senior High School in Sadakwa is also here. Oh, there's a parent. Yeah, let me take the call. Are you calling from the hotel And you are speaking to the Minister for Education this morning. I'm blessed. You are blessed. I'm also blessed speaking with you. <laughs> What issue do you have, sir? Unfortunately, she was placed in the as a day student. Oh, you are from the voter region. What time in the voter region, please? Oh. Are you at home and your child has been placed at Odogono as a day student? Yes, please. So obviously you need a boarding status, right? Yes, please. Okay, can you give me your child's name, please? 010. Oh, you give me the index number, 010. 36 one six one six zero four four zero four four and can I repeat it for you please zero one zero three six one six zero four four my staff will get back to you as soon as they do it for me I will love to call you back and and speak with you. But thank you so much for calling the call center of the Ministry of Education, where the minister responded to your call. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm glad to inform you that we'll resolve the issue and your child can go to school immediately. Thank you so much for. You want Elijah to speak with the minister? <laughs> Yes. Now, the Ghana Education Service says it has resolved 80% of the challenges facing the school selection, computerized school selection and placement system. The CSSPS was designed to simplify and streamline school placement process. Uh, has been, you know, several setbacks or has seen several setbacks early this year. But the data in charge of school and instruction, Max Sassu says, the challenges have been salvaged. Out of this 918, 917 schools, the total vacancies that were declared were 705, 327. And the total number of candidates that were presented is 547,329. So if all this 547,000 even goes to the school, enrolled in the school, we have some spaces left. So we have about 188,782. So looking at these spaces that are left, no student should complain, complain that, or no school should complain that they are overcrowded because we have 188 one month that we have engaged in the call center we have received 
more than 300 and something thousand calls. And as a result, we have been able to resolve of the challenges that we experienced. The challenges were those who want to change from what? Day to boarding. Those who want to convert from what? From the grammar schools to the TV schools. Those who just want to, they are not interested in the school that they were given, so they want to change the schools. Now, Executive Director for the African Education Watch, Kofi Asari, thinks the minister must be worried that weeks after schools reopen, some children are still going through challenges. He joins us via Zoom now for a conversation on this development. I'm grateful to you for joining us. Why do you say the minister must be worried? Well, uh, good evening, and um, good evening to your cherished audience. Mm. Um, school reopened close to a month ago, and um, per the directive of the GNES, Classes started about three weeks ago. So I see the minister should be worried that um, three weeks after school um, classes began, there are still students at home um, engaging with placement solution centers to get schools. Mm. And that is why I said that he must be worried that there are still people at home. Um, I am also worried because I know there are some children who are home because they are not able to um, finance the cost of their prospectus. Yesterday, I was having a discussion with a boy who was placed in a school called Mozano School of Music Senior High School in Gumwa, Mozano, and he's still home because he has not got he hasn't got three thousand cities to finance his prospectus. Mm. And there are so many other of such issues. So yes, I think the minister have to be worried um, that. At this point, there are still people who are calling placement centers to follow up on um, their placement because others have been through classes for three weeks, mm. with other schools even having their first PTA. Presidential their first PTA just um, over the weekend. So um, they, he might be worried. Okay. I also think that it is a good thing that the minister is following up on the work of the solution centers um, to ensure that the writing has been done except for the fact that we are at the tail end of the process when there was pressure you know in the first week first two weeks after after the school placement was announced you know um, that was when i thought you know such visits were needed but who knows the minister may have various ways of working to have an eye there and you know by proxy supervise how it goes on there mm. and he determines when to personally go there and then have a look at so I can't begrudge him. Mm -hmm. But on, on the lighter side, I yes, when you said that he he, he did a miracle, I I just asked my I was just wondering because indeed it was a miracle. Mm -hmm. Not because of the coincidence. Mm -hmm. Not because of the sheer coincidence, but because of the fact that to the best of my knowledge, Odogono Senior High School is located in Greater Accra region. And if the Odogono Senior High School is the one the, the caller referred to, mm -hmm. and that is located about 160 kilometers from home. Yeah, the computer does not allow you to even select a day school which is more than 16 kilometers from your residence. Mm. So, I'm still wondering, it is virtually impossible for anyone to select or double no senior high school in Accra when they are living in who it is not possible. Okay, now. now it, yeah. You heard the director explaining that, that since this system was implemented, this is the first time a Minister of Education is visiting them. So I guess in your speech, you also agree that this must be sustained, where we should have ministers attending to these centres uh, at some point in time, isn't it? I think we must situate this within the broader context of transparency and um, um, accountability. The minister, yes, as I indicated in our release after the, the Buhaha surrounding the 2022 placement uh, rep and the uh, reports. We indicated that the ministry, the minister needing to participate directly in placing students, you know, okay. by having access to category A plus passwords. Mm -hmm. Those are administrative functions that the minister designates, but supervises. So if the minister, um, as part of his supervision, decides to directly visit them unannounced, mm -hmm. um, I think it's a good thing that you must encourage. But let me indicate, 
that within the broader context of transparency, the minister should be interested in ensuring that school placement data is made available to the public for scrutiny. Okay. We are, you are aware that we actually have to draft the Ministry of Education to the Rights Information Commission for failing to give us school placement data for just the 30 percent public school allocations to um, category A schools. Mm. Even though the Rights Information Commission has fined the ministry 50,000 Ghana cities and ordered the same to release the 2022 um, placement data to us, the ministry has still refused. If the minister is so minded about transparency and letting the public know how their work you know, is carried out, which is great, the minister should be concerned about releasing school placement data to, 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 to um, you know, for scrutiny the public, because okay. that is that, that is even uh, the high a higher mark of transparency mm. Mm. Uh, than 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 resisting okay. every attempt by the Rights Information Commission to release that information to us. Okay. So yes, I think the message is good. Um, um, but I think but it must be placed in contest. Well, um, yeah, exactly. I mean, like you stated, about it's getting to a month. Some children are still home. They've not been able to place themselves. What must we do to ensure that the system works, you know, accordingly, according to how it was designed to perform? Again, about the minister's concern. That's why I initially said that the minister might be very much concerned about why, in spite of reopening, three weeks into reopening, mm. um, Today, listening to their commencement of academic activity, there are still students home with some parents placing calls to call centers. The issue is this. The biggest impediment now for most of those who haven't enrolled yet is the high cost of school prospectus. Okay. That we are doing a comprehensive analysis of school prospectus and we will soon come out to the report. But I can tell you that the school, prospect school prospectus are ranging from 3,000 to 7,000, okay? And a parent who cannot afford 2,000 cities, which is almost how much government is paying for free senior high school to be called free, okay? If a parent cannot afford 2,000, how can they afford 6,000 and 7,000? So I agree with the president when he was launching the free senior high school program at WAS that the main aim of the policy is to remove financial access barriers to secondary education by the poor. Okay. These access barriers are actually faced by the poorest of the poor, and he aimed to remove those access barriers. And I agree with the president in 2017 when he launched the policy at West Africa Secondary School. But now, we have a, a, an even bigger financial barrier, where even though government is paying about 2,000 Ghana cities a whole year for free senior high school to make second education free, and if you like, remove the financial access barrier the president said. We are having schools imposing prospectus as much as three times higher than the financial access barrier that the His Excellency the President is removing through the free financial policy. Mm. So did we go or did we come, as mm. someone put it? And okay. that's why I believe that we must have a critical look at, at, at existing financial barriers to access free senior high school, especially by the poorest. So okay. I'll be happy if the mm. minister takes a much more closer look at the composition of school prospectors and the extent to which those school prospectors have high potential to deny the poorest access to, to the free senior school, especially the students mm. who I spoke about in Goma Mozano, who still okay. haven't been able to enroll because he hasn't got 3,000 cities to find out right. the cost of his school. Grateful to you, Mr. Sari, for joining us here. He is executive director for the Africa Education Watch. We'll take a break here. We'll be back with more news. Stay with us.